Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at creating an automapper clone using C Sharp Reflection. In the previous three videos we've created an automapper clone using a C Sharp Expression APIs, IL Code Generation and Source Generators. This time it's Reflection, probably one of the easier approaches, I'm doing it for completeness and after this there's going to be one more video where we're going to use Roseland Generators. Nevertheless, let's get started, we have the same setup, we have Class A, Class B, we want to map one instance to another. Let's see how we can do this using reflection. So first of all, I'll just create a static class, which is going to map from A to B. Uh, nothing too crazy. We're going to have some kind of result of this B and at the end we'll return this result. With the reflection, what we have to do is we have to find information about each individual properties, the type that we're getting it from and the type that we're mapping it to. We have the from type, we have the to type, what properties does the from type has, what properties does the to type has, find the similar properties, and then just invoke the relevant methods to extract data and map it to the other class. Let's see how this looks like. So we wanna get the from properties. So from props, uh, this will come from our A type. We'll just call get properties. These are gonna be all of our from properties. And then the two properties. So two props, so these are gonna come from B. We then want to iterate over all the from props. A props, yeah, and there we go. This is going to come from. We then want to look for the two props if it has this from prop. So again, we check the name, see if the from prop name matches. So if the names match, we're good. This is going to be the to property. I can append the prop to the name of this. Although right now, for example, it doesn't matter. At the moment, we're using default. So if we don't find a similarity, we can just skip this. So if two is null, just continue because apparently this, if we have an additional property on here, there is nothing to map it on the B. So we continue. Let's format this out a little bit, not saving it just yet. Now that we're aware that we have from and to property, we want to basically call the getter on the instance of A and then call the setter with the value that we extracted from the getter. So from we get the get method, we invoke it, super simple, we put the A in there and then there are no parameters, we get our value. We then go to the to property, so we're looking for this setter, right? Talking like a computer set method, again we invoke it, <laughs> and then we invoke it on the result. So this is where we're going to put it, the the value specifically. And, uh, you know, just put it in an array because uh, that is the current syntax. Again, don't save it. That's a reflex from me. And that's pretty much it. So that's the map method. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, write up our object. So ID will be five and then name will be Bob. Nothing too crazy. Running it doesn't yield anything because, well, we don't output anything. So uh, let's uh, dump it so we can actually see this object right here. It looks real nice, five and Bob, and this is an instance of B, and even though we're using A. So this pretty much works. Uh, we then do our usual experiment where we can do word here and then body, or it's the other way around, although it doesn't matter. Here we can say something like this, and then we can say that this is a word. Uh, because word is not present on B, uh, you get the default value of the body. If we then make the two match, uh, this one would override the other property. Uh, now again, we're going to go through the same, same exercise where, uh, okay, we are uh, resolving what kind of mapping log logic we want or how do we want to do it? What kind of caching we can we put around this? So same as before, we're just going to create a class uh, which is going to be a mapper. It is going to contain the static method. So public static map. And uh, we pretty much do the same, but we go through the mapper. Uh, there are some, uh, how to say it, errors around this uh, needing to be public. So I'm just gonna turn these classes to public. And let's come back here. So first of all, let's make sure that this is a little bit more generic. So we're supporting more than just the B type. Uh, the from type, or rather the two type is gonna come from T. T will need to be a class, so on here we're going to say T, uh, where it's a class and it's a new, uh, so we can actually call the constructor on it, like that, okay. 
the A here, uh, again, because I'm mapping to B, I want to supply more than just A and I don't want to be able to have to put A here that we're mapping it from A to B. Uh, that's going to be apparent here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, change this uh, to object. Inside of this, we get the type here. So get type from F and we're pretty much at the same stage. We're going to, however, invoke it on F here, run it just to know that it's working again. Now, instead of constantly trying to find all the properties on one object, all the properties on the other object, we want to kind of bundle up the known mapping from type to type and all the relevant properties that we're going to get from and map to. So let's create a dictionary where we're going to have our typical key where we're going to go from and we're going to go to. Uh, this doesn't really matter too much in terms of the identifiers you put here. This is just for clarity. Uh, and then we want to get the methods, the get method and set method. They are both method infos. So that is what we're not meth infos, method infos, uh, just like that. And then another method info. So a collection of method mappings, really. And this is going to be our cache and we're just going to assign it to a new object. Now what we have to do is actually fill this cache. So public static void, we're going to populate cache key for some kind of key. The specific key type is going to be this. So we can take a look at this key right here and then move all the logic that's uh, regarding population of this cache into this method and trigger it appropriately. So first of all, let's create the key from type will be f dot get type and then to not cancellation token, but this is going to be type of T. And then we can still do the same where we have uh, key from and then key to we will grab all of this this will go here this is where we find out all of the properties if we need them we would then scan through them and register them in this cache the bit about the mapping actually stays here the registration of the mappings happens here in the populate cache method everything's a little bit messed up because i'm missing one curly brace here i want to take this type right over here. And this is what I'm populating. This is going to be a list of a result or my cache entry. This is a new entry where I want to start appending the methods. So entry add, and I want to add my from, uh, this is going to be get method. So we get this property. And then if I remember how to type, this is going to be set method. We create our tuple here. This is the entry. After this for loop, it's going to be populated. We then go to the cache and it is not static, so we can't reach it. So let's just quickly make it static. Uh, square braces, put the key in and then save the entry. And this specific method, we want to invoke it when we don't have something in the cache. If our cache contains key uh, not, that's when we actually want to go ahead and populate the cache for this specific key. And then we actually want to get our entry from the cache. I don't know how performant it is to put this in the for loop. So if in the for each loop, we will have entry and cache key. Uh, this seems more performant. It's not like we're trying to access the entity from the dictionary. Every time we try to loop over, we kind of like hold it in memory and then we access it from there. That's kind of my thinking about that. I don't know if there's many optimizations that C sharp does in the case that if we would do something like this, okay. And then the grand scheme of things, it might not matter, but yeah, anyway, for each of these entries, we want to go ahead and get this item one or item two. Uh, these are going to be getters and setters. So for item one, we're going to get our getter and invoke it For item two, we're going to get our setter and invoke it. So now we have uh, caching as well. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Uh, obviously missing a semicolon. And here it is still working. However, this time, let's say if I put a breakpoint, I am going to hit it if there is nothing in the cache. So if I run it multiple times uh, after the first run, it is well not going to be 
execute it. We're just going to get the entry from the cache with all the available mappings. And that's pretty much it to this approach of uh, doing auto mapper clone with reflection. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section or come ask them on my Discord server. As always, a big thank you to all my patrons. Thank you very much for your support. If you're not supporting me yet, please consider. All the links are in the description. Thank you for watching and have a good day.